some really important work here. Uh, we're not a well-known federal agency, uh, but the work that we do is critical to all Americans, and that has to do with making those 80 million uh, Social Security payments every month, making sure that they're on time every time. Last year, we made over 1.1 billion payments to over 100 million Americans. Um, we we're also responsible for the collections uh, of, to fund the operations of government. Last year, we collected $3.1 trillion. Both with respect to collections and payments, we endeavor to do that as efficiently, as effectively as we can. So over 90% of our payments have been made electronically, and over 95% of our collections have been done electronically uh, at a significant cost savings to the American taxpayer. We also manage a daily cash flow of $88 billion through our cash management function. We are also responsible for funding and financing government operations. Last year, we conducted over 260 auctions, raising uh, $7.7 trillion in securities. We are also, uh, in, with respect to making government operate more efficiently, our large provider of shared services uh, to other federal government agencies. We've been designated as a center of excellence by the Office of Management and Budget, and we provide shared services in information technology, accounting, procurement, travel, and human resources. Finally, we're also responsible for uh, collection of delinquent debt for the federal government. Last year, we collected $6.2 billion in delinquent debt owed to the federal government, 2.2 of which was for delinquent child support. Um, what we do in our organization, we call those payments lifeline payments. We're very proud of the fact that we help families and, and collect child support um, because we know what we do is very important. We know what we do makes a difference. And we also have a great deal of pride in what we do. We do very well as an organization. Um, these impressive accomplishments wouldn't be possible without the, the dedication and the commitment of our workforce. Um, we just did a short tour a little while ago in which we met many of those workers. Um, I know from my perspective, um, I have an enormous amount of pride to lead this organization when I know that people come in on weekends. I know they go well beyond the call of duty. The kinds of things that the American public doesn't see um, but that we know in order for the American economy to work, we need to do these things. Um, so uh, they are the lifeblood and the, and the heart and soul of the organization, uh, and we're very <coughs> proud of the work that they do. As an organization going forward, we remain committed to improving financial management across government. We remain committed to improving government operations and doing that as effectively, as efficiently as we can. We take the notion of stewardship to the American public and the people we serve very seriously. So we will continue to try to find ways to make our operations work more efficiently on behalf of the American public. It is now my pleasure uh, to introduce to some of the speak today's speakers. Senator Mikulski, who all I think you know, is a respected and esteemed member of the Senate leadership. Um, she's the first woman of the prestigious Senate Appropriations Committee, and this is a truly unique achievement, and we're very honored to have her here today. We're also excited to have Congresswoman Donna Edwards with an Infrastructure Committee and a House Science and Technology Committee. She and Congresswoman, uh, she and Senator uh, uh, Mikulski appreciate the efforts that they have on behalf of the, of the federal government. Oftentimes, we don't get the credit that we deserve, and these are two tireless champions to make sure that we do get much of the credit that we deserve. We're also pleased to have Prince George's County Executive Baker here with us today, and we're honored to have him here. And finally, I'd also like to thank Colleen Kelly, President of the National Treasury Employees Union, for being here. We have had a very good and strong, productive relationship with the union over the years, uh, and we look forward to having that. We can't do much of what we do without that kind of support. So I now turn it over to Senator Mikulski. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. And just for openers, I brought my own podium. <laughs> Usually I'm behind a podium on my stool with these big guys uh, like uh, Commissioner Liebrick and uh, County Executive Edwards. So I got something to fit me for a change. So now when you come to the Senate, podiums come in size 14 petite. Um, but it's not how big the podium is, it's how big the effort is. And I'm here today, um, delighted to be here with the Commissioner and of course with my colleague in government, Congresswoman Edwards. Uh, County Executive Baker, and we want to say a special hello to Colleen Kelly for the NTEU. In behalf of the Maryland delegation, speaking for Senator Cardin, Donna will speak for the House members, we want to announce that the jobs, the 450 jobs in FMS that were scheduled to move to West Virginia starting in 2015 
will now be delayed for five years, which gives us the chimes to reevaluate and reexamine. But I will tell you, the jobs you have today are here today and will stay here. We love West Virginia. This isn't about West Virginia. This is about you and the job that you do every day in every way. We are so proud of the financial management service, the fact that it is under the Department of Treasury, that it is where the President of the United States turns every day to see what is the fiscal status of the United States of America. And because we are the United States of America, it is open, it's transparent. It's not only for the President to see, but it's for the world to see. And when it is published and done, and all the work and analysis is done by the de de dedicated, duty-driven people who work here for the Federal Ma Management Service, you know you can count on it. It's like being certified by the big accounting firms. If this were United States of America dot Inc., you would need to have a certified audit signed off by the CEO. Well, Barack Obama can sign this every day because he has confidence in the job that you do, that the information is here, is truthful, it's accurate, it has integrity, and the world can bank on it, buy our T-bills, the private sector can know where to invest, and we can keep our great economy going because this gives us the basic status of what some of the fundamentals are. And that job can only be done by trained, dedicated people with knowledge and know-how and a willingness to serve even under difficult circumstances. That's why we fought so hard, because you do such a good job. Literally, America banks on you, and you need to be able to bank on us to make sure that we let you be you, to keep the jobs that you have, to do the way you do them so well and with such integrity, and that's why we fought so hard. You know, sometimes in Washington, when they want to look at how they can save money, they do tabletop exercises, they move little boxes around, they never met a whiteboard they didn't like or a latte they didn't want to drink. But we, and, and what looks so good in those kind of tabletops, uh, don't look good in reality. But thanks to you and thanks to the fact that the people could, the NTEU workers could speak up, we were able to work very hard. So our delegation went to work for you. Congre Council, County Executive Baker gave us a call and we knew about it. Congresswoman Edwards was absolutely standing sentry and went to work in the House and organized the House delegation. No Stenny, Chris Van Hollen, John Sarbanes, and Elijah Cummings were on our side, but she really was the organizer of the team. In the Senate, it was Senator Cardin and I uh, who went to work. And I will tell you, my new job as the chair of the Appropriations Committee didn't hurt either. <laughs> So I'm that appropriator you have to sign off on. So we went to work and began our negotiations with the Treasury. We understand government has to be more frugal. And we believe in a more frugal government. But it's not whether you have a big government or a small government, it's if you have a smart government. And when you have a smart government, you want to be sure that if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. So that's why we went to work for you <coughs> and worked so hard. This Hyattsville office means great middle class jobs and we want to make sure that they stay here and that you get to be you. And that we all need to now work together to make sure our country is on the right financial path. You keep telling it like it is. You keep telling it like it is and then we need to do our job. So for right now, I think this is very good news. We were happy to be Team Maryland to work for you so you could do such a great job for our government, for our country, for our president. And now I'd like to bring up 
one of the able members of Team Mir, who is a tenacious fighter. She doesn't let anything slip by her. And then we're kind of a one-two team over in the, in, in the, under the dome. Congresswoman. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Mikulski. Um, I, I want to say, first of all, thank you to uh, the commissioner. Um, it was actually really great to be able to walk through this morning and talk to the employees here to really get a deeper understanding of what they do and the contribution that um, the FMS makes to, um, to the work of the federal government and makes us all so proud. It's always great to be in the company of, of Senator Mikulski, who uh, has been a tremendous partner uh, in our work to keep these middle class jobs, 450 of them here in Prince George's County, here in Maryland. And of course our, our, our county executive who doesn't let a sentence go by without talking about the need for strong economic development. Um, and I want to pay a particular thanks to our friends and colleagues at the NTEU, uh, Colleen Kelly for your leadership. Uh, when uh, and I want to walk you back a little bit because about seven months ago, I, you know, just got a stack of paper like you do, getting ready to go into a hearing to do a kind of routine sign-off on uh, things that come through our economic development subcommittee and through the transportation committee. I said, let me take a look at that list, and I looked down the list and I saw um, this proposed move to the financial management services of the financial management services. We, um, I made a call. Um, both to the agency and we made our one of our first calls and early calls to the union um, to our colleagues in the union and say what is going on here and I want to know because we're meeting at nine o'clock the next morning this was about uh, five or six o'clock in the evening and um, and when I found that found that out I said well we need to know something about it it turns out Senator Mikulski that the, our colleagues from West Virginia on our committee also had no idea about this and so it was at that point that we, um, we got together, worked together, as, a, as uh, Senator Mikulski has said, as a team, um, to fight for the jobs here because of the talent um, that this workforce brings, and working with our county executive and all of our team, Maryland, uh, to make that happen. And it really you know, was indeed a good one-two punch from the House to the Senate, um, and working with an agency that is a strong and committed uh, federal partner that does the hard work um, of this government that does, in fact, Commissioner, I think, go greatly unnoticed. Um, but we are pleased about uh, being able to work through, like adults, something that's going to result in the appropriate kind of transition so that we do have the kind of efficient uh, government that Senator Mikulski uh, talks about. I looked as we were going through, and um, in addition to the annual reports, of course, um, the, the uh, agency produces this daily treasury statement. I'm actually, I'm really glad to see that our treasury has more than I have in my checking account, which is good. But this is, a, the, the work that this team puts together is the work that tells us what's in the federal government, how much we have to spend on a daily basis, and what we're spending on a daily basis. And as Senator Mikulski said, then becomes the basis on which the entire world economy functions. These are really important jobs. This is an important <coughs> aspect of our, our federal government. And it is yet another example, and Senator Mikulski uh, knows this, but yet another example of our strong and talented and committed and dedicated uh, federal workforce that seems to be under assault just about every single day. Um, and so I want to thank uh, uh, all of the employees here in the agency for what you, uh, for what you do, uh, to the partnership that we've had with the union, to the ability of us to work together uh, to uh, stretch this time frame out to December 2019 so that we can really think through in the most positive and effective way uh, what it means for all of our workforce and for the operations of the federal government um, and, and the efficiency of the federal government and its services um, to have jobs whether they're here or in West Virginia. And I think as the Senator said, this is not a battle between st two states about um, where jobs are. This is about 
uh, where it makes the most sense with the most talented workforce and the most dedicated workforce to, uh, to get the job of the federal government done in the most efficient way. Um, and with that, I would like to take this opportunity um, to, um, to introduce, and, and let me just say before I close, Coleman, uh, to Eric King, and, and to M Matt Socknat, who um, is the legislative representative for NTEU. And it is almost like we had um, a direct phone line with, um, uh, with Matt to make sure um, that we were on the right track here. And so thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to uh, welcome my friend, a great partner for all of us in Team Maryland. Um, and that is a county executive who lives, breathes, uh, Rashern Baker. It, it is indeed a good a good day, and Senator Mikulski, you're right. This is your podium. <laughs> um, you know, I I, am, I have the distinct honor of being county executive um, and being able to work with such a great team. Um, as uh, Senator Mikulski talked about Team Maryland, and um, uh, and she talked about our congresswoman, my congresswoman uh, Donna Edwards. I wrote down in my little notes, uh, she's our point guard. Uh, she's the person that's, uh, that's, that's calling the plays and leading us down, down the field. You know, um, I got two calls when this happened. Uh, the first call was from our point guard, uh, Congresswoman Edwards, saying, you know, we need to rally around this. We're about to lose uh, jobs in Prince George's County. And as I was talking to her, I got uh, a call on the bat phone, uh, which means when Senator Mikulski calls, if you've ever dealt with Senator Mikulski, you know when she calls, you immediately answer. So uh, aide came in and said, uh, uh, Senator Mikulski is on the phone. And uh, they both said the same thing is, we're going to go to work um, with, uh, with, with Congresswoman, Congressman Hoyer, um, who called me also and said, we're pulling together uh, Team Maryland and everybody, that we're going to go fight for these jobs. Uh, that was important for me to hear. Um, and I know it also was important for the council member who represents this area, who's here with us today, Will Campos. We can give him a round of applause, please. Um, and it's important for us because not only did we want to keep those great jobs right here in Prince George's <coughs> County, uh, we had a chance to meet the, uh, the employees that work here, uh, that do a great job and an important job, Mr. Commissioner, for um, for the folks in the, in the state and in the country. Uh, but it is also a critical point of our economic development. Not long before we got those calls, uh, Councilmember Campos, myself, our, de our economic development team had actually taken a tour around this area. And we were so pleased to have these employees here who <coughs> are a vital part of our community. And we were talking about the things that we're going to do to really bring this area up. And so in the midst of those, um, those talks, you get a call from a newspaper saying, well, part of your economic development strategy is getting ready to walk out the door. So you can imagine how we felt. But as I said, I have you know, really the best job in the world because I've got a great team uh, that's working on Capitol Hill that never s misses an opportunity to make sure that uh, the state is taken care of that Prince George is taken care of, and that we're all on the same track. Um, so it, I just want to thank you for the hard work, personally thank you, on behalf of Prince George's County and the state and these employees for the work that you're doing. If we can give them another round of applause, please. <laughs> because it's not only good for Prince George's County, good for the workforce here, but it is also good for the country, and, uh, and, and we're really, really pleased with their work. So. In the uh, spirit of celebration, one of the things that I always say to NTEU members uh, and potential members to federal employees across the country is this. I tell them that everything about the working life of a federal employee is decided by those who are elected, especially to the House and to the Senate. They make every decision about federal employees, and this is a classic example of that. So I would like to take the opportunity to uh, recognize um, the elect our elected House and Senate members who have spearheaded this effort for us today. And I would ask Eric King to join me. Eric, uh, Eric King is an IT specialist. Would join us up here. We'd like to present this to you.
Well, let's step out so you can get a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> I got my good outfit. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yes, he's coming out here. And it says, uh, presented in recognition of your leadership on behalf of the federal employees at the financial management services who serve our country. The National Treasury Employees Union recognizes your ongoing commitment to these workers and America's federal workforce with gratitude. Thank you so, so much, Senator. Thank you. A leader among leaders. And boy, are we glad she's there every day. Cal, can you hold this for me? Oh, you're very welcome, Senator. It's an honor. Here, Thank you for all your work. When we do. We have um, Congresswoman Edwards, if you would join us. We have a plaque for you uh, on behalf of NTU, and I guess we'll follow the Senator's lead, and we'll do it over here. How's that? There you go. And it's to the Honorable Donna Edwards, presented in appreciation of your efforts on behalf of the federal employees of the Financial Management Service. Your ongoing support is recognized with the thanks and appreciation of the National Treasury Employees Union. Thank you. Um, and we know that, um, what do they say, no good deed goes unpunished. So while we know that today is uh, a day to celebrate, we also know that it's not the end. But we also know, and the, more importantly, the 450 employees know, they will not be alone as these discussions, considerations, and future decisions are made about them. They know that you three will all be standing there with them, and that is something very, very positive that I know makes each of their days a lot better. Thank you all very much, and thanks again for the opportunity to be here.